Hey guys, we are starting our Halloween DIYs with one of these kitchen measurement placards from Dollar Tree. You could use the back, but I want to use the front because it has this detailing all around it. And I'm just going to paint over the middle part that has the words and the pictures. And I'm just going to use some black acrylic paint. I'm just going to squeeze a couple of dollops on here and just cover up the wording, being careful to avoid those edges. Again, I am using this side because I do want those details of the jar. While that dries, I'm going to take these printables that I found on Pinterest and I'm just deciding which ones I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and cut them out and I like these because they have that chalkboard feel to them. And once they're cut out, I arrange them the way I want them to be on the sign. And so I'm going to take a little bit of Mod Podge and apply it to the back of the pictures and then apply them back to the sign. Pinterest has a lot of these printables available, so go ahead on there and um, just look them up. There are a lot of terrific ones for free. Again, I just chose this because of the chalkboard look. Then I'm going to take some of this craft string. I found this at Walmart. It was in a package with a lot of different colors. I'm just going to wrap it around a few times and then tie it into a tight knot. And then I'm going to take the rest of the string and I'm going to make a bow pretty much the same way I would make a jute twine bow, wrapping it around my fingers and then tying it off. And once that's done, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and apply it to the side of the little mason jar picture. Now it's a little bottle of uh, poison arsenic. <laughs> But you know, you want your arsenic to look cute, right? Now I'm going to take one of these cat wood ornaments. Also, I'm going to take a witch hat. And some of this glitter all from the Dollar Tree. And I did get a little box to help contain the glitter because you know it gets everywhere. And now I'm going to cover the wood cutouts with the Mod Podge. And then I'm going to use sprinkle glitter all over it for the cat. I use the pure black glitter. And then for the witch hat, I used the dark silver glitter. And of course the glitter got all over my hands. So if you can do this outside, that's what I would recommend. I'm going to take this little piece of chalk on its side and I just want to kind of scrape down the sign because I want it to have an aged look. Um, I just kind of want the wording, the labels on the jar to kind of blend in with the rest of the jar. So I'm just using a light hand and just covering the black part um, of the jar with the chalk. But it was a little too obscure across the lettering. So I did take my finger and just wipe off some of the chalk around the lettering so that you could read what the labels say. And then once my two little wood ornament cutouts are dried and set up, I do use a little bit of hot glue and I'm attaching the witch hat to one side and I'll add hot glue to the little scaredy cat <laughs> and attach it to the other side. And our cute little bottle of poisonous arsenic is all done. Oh, and I did add that little bat sticker to the top and I did add hot glue to it to make it stick. Now for our little pink flamingo that's about to undergo quite a transformation. I'm going to take the sticks out. Those are the legs for the bird. Set those aside. And I'm taking black acrylic paint. This is the one from the Dollar Tree. It's my first time using it. And a foam brush. And I'm going to paint the body black. Now, if you have 
spray paint I would highly recommend using the black spray paint I don't have black spray paint so um, I'm just using this acrylic paint but this little bird has so many little crevices um, because of the texture of it spray painting it would be a thousand times easier um, but if you do only have paint like I did you just want to kind of use a back and forth motion working it in to cover the pink I'm also going to paint the whole beak black and I decided to take the black paint on the body down just a little more so that's what I'm doing here And now I'm going to take this Waverly paint in crimson and I'm going to paint the rest of the neck and the head in this red crimson. There are a lot of different kinds of vultures. When I was looking at pictures of vultures, there were many different kinds. So I decided to kind of combine a couple of them to make my own kind of vulture. <laughs> we'll just call it the Dollar Tree Vulture. You want to be careful around the eyes. I do want to keep those eyes white. And so I'm using a smaller little brush. And now with some white acrylic paint, I'm going to paint the bottom of the beak in a white color. And I'm going to set that aside to dry. While it does, I'm going to stick the legs in a piece of Dollar Tree foam and just go over those with the black acrylic paint as well. To finish off our vulture, I'm going to take this little princess boa from Dollar Tree and just using one line of hot glue to start it out. I'm going to wrap the boa around the neck of the vulture. And it doesn't take much because this um, little boa is so fluffy. So I wrap it around twice, then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Now this part I do recommend doing outside because when you cut this, like little feathers go flying everywhere. So it's much easier to clean up feathers or you don't have to clean them up outside, they'll just blow away. And I'm going to secure the other end of the boa with hot glue. Now I know right now it's looking like a Liberace vulture with the feathers. It looks like it's going to a party, but it's okay. We are going to trim these feathers down so it looks more like a bird of, like a scavenger bird than um, a bird on its way to a Grammy party. <laughs> So you clip it down as much as you want to. Also, if you have the craft stems at your Dollar Tree, if you find a white one, that would work just as well. Our little bird is done, so I'm going to go ahead and reinsert the legs. And I'm going to stand it up using this piece of craft foam. And I'm going to cover the craft foam with this hay-colored Excelsior grass from Dollar Tree. And that's what it looks like. So now we're going to make a cute little haunted house. I think this one is the most kid-friendly one. Using a black and gray acrylic paint. Um, I'm going to go back and forth in between the paints because I want to give this house an old weathered look. And I'm also going to paint the base of it. These are the smaller um, haunted houses with the stand dollar tree also has a large version these are the smaller ones using these rubbing plates i'm going to take the brick pattern out of it now it has a front and it has a back i thought the back would be better because it's more raised so i went over it with a little acrylic paint because i wanted to give these houses a brick paint a brick effect and it didn't really work so you'll see me place it over the house and press down on it and rub along the lines, trying to get it to transfer. But when I take the rubbing plate off, nothing. <laughs> that was a fail. So I decided to try 
the right side of the rubbing plate. Again, I just went over it with some black acrylic paint. And then I'm going to place this side down on the front of the house. And there you have it. That worked much better. So I did it again to the other house. And I really, really like the effect. This is my first time using these rubbing plates. Um, so now I'm going to paint the tops of the roofs in black. And guys, after this, you can just customize this any way you want to. I am going to take this little wood puzzle, the back of it, that's going to use the back of it. I took the little puzzle pieces out and now I'm going to paint the back of it in black. And this is going to be the base for our little haunted houses to stand on. So I gave it two coats of black acrylic paint and I let it dry completely. And once it dried, I just took some hot glue and applied it to the bottom of each base of the house, the little stand part, and I hot glued it down to the board. I'm going to show you how I decorated it at the end of the video. Um, like I said, you can just do whatever you want to to your haunted house to make it your own. And that's what it looks like on its base. Now for our potion bottles, I'm going to take a, this glass bottle from Dollar Tree. It does come with a little cork in it. And using, again, black acrylic paint, I'm going to give this bottle, I'm going to paint it basically until I can't see the glass anymore. And you can use whatever color paint you want for these. You can make a bunch of different colors. Um, that would look really pretty. But I just wanted to have kind of a dark theme with these potion bottles and that's why I'm using the black acrylic paint and of course I do want to paint the cork top as well. Now I'm taking this bottle that I also had uh, rinsed it out that's why you see the little beads of water and I'm going to use the same black acrylic paint and do the same thing paint it all over I'm going to paint the top and the little um, closing part whatever that's called <laughs> and this is what they look like I love the way they came out again these are some printables that I found on Pinterest and these were free. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the two that I want to use. And again, putting my little bottle of Mod Podge to use, I'm going to apply some to the middle of the bottle where I want to place the label. I'm gonna put it on the bottle, place the label on the bottle. And then I'm going to go over the top of the label with the Mod Podge. Now it did cause my paper to kind of crinkle up, but you will see that that only added to the look and feel of an old bottle. It really gave it a lot of character. So if you want your label to lay more flat, you probably want to downsize it. I did enlarge this uh, image because I wanted a larger image, but you can make your image smaller so it doesn't kind of bend and crackle. For this next bottle, it was a little bit easier because there aren't all of the designs on the bottle that the first one has. So it will lay more flat. And I did end up applying Mod Podge to both the bottle and the back of the label. And it helped to relax the paper so that it would lay flat. And again, I add Mod Podge over the top to ensure that it's properly sealed. Now for the cool part, I'm gonna take a black crayon and a white crayon from these um, 
from this box of crayons that I got at Dollar Tree. For this bottle, I will be using the white crayon because it is for the bone powder, so it just makes sense. But you do want to make sure you take the paper off of both the crayons before you use them because we are now about to involve fire. And fire and paper are not friends. So here we go. I'm just going to take this long lighter from Dollar Tree, of course, and I'm going to hold it right up against the crayon. And I'm trying to get the drips that come off of the crayon to fall down the bottle and give it a really spooky and eerie effect. If you guys have done this method before, drop a comment below and let me know what you used it for. I have um, always wanted to do this method. I have never tried it. And I thought what better time to use it than for a Halloween DIY. I did consider using red, but um, it's bone powder, so I thought the white crayon would be more appropriate. And that is what our bottle looks like so far. Now for our beak of raven. Of course, ravens and their beaks are both black, so I'm using the black crayon for this bottle and I really really love the way the black crayon dripped onto this bottle. I thought it just gave it an amazing effect and I could not have been happier with the way it turned out. Now I do have to tell you that I mostly did the drips on the bottle um, towards the front where you could see the label and some on the side. I did not go all the way around but if you have a display where people will have a 360 degree view of the bottles, then I would say to go all the way around the bottle with the drips. Um, I only use half a crayon for each of these and look how much coverage I got. Really, really nice. All right, and now for our ghost mirror, you want to remove the mirror from the mirror holder. <laughs> I don't know, from the backing. And so I'm just showing you, I kind of um, bent the back of the mirror backwards to try to release the mirror up for it to pop out. And so it popped out just like that. So once that's done, I went and Googled some vintage pictures and I chose these two. And I just want to cut out the face. So I'm gonna hold the mirror up to the part of the picture that I want to cut out. And I'm gonna use a pencil to trace around it really lightly, just so I'll have a rough guide of where to cut the pictures. And you guys can either take your own pictures, you can make your own um, kind of goofy faces and put your own faces in your haunted mirrors, um, or you can Google images and find the ones that you would like. So once they're cut out, I'm gonna place them on the back, this one in particular, on the back of the little mirror and trace around um, where the image would go. And then I'm going to take, um, this is 100 um, sandpaper, and I do cut it down a little bit just to make it easier to work with. And I'm going to sand the backing off the mirror right within the circle that I drew for the picture. You do wanna be careful that you don't sand too much off and if it's if you send off more than the size of your picture um, it just won't you want the picture to take up that opening that you make 
You see how you can see just her face and not anything beyond that? So that's what it looks like. Of course, the mirror is dirty. It'll look better, but I'm just showing you how it turned out. So add hot glue to the front of the picture all around the edges. You can also tape the picture in um, because you won't be able to see the tape, but I decided to use hot glue. And now we need to reattach the mirror to the backing. And I'm just going to put hot glue all around the edges and place the mirror back in. So our first one is done. Now the second picture, her face was a little bit bigger than the first one. So I decided to use this square frame mirror also from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use the same method. I'm gonna trace around her head. So I'll have a rough idea of how much sanding I need to do. And then I'm gonna take the same 100 grit sandpaper and sand the backing off. And I just want to clean off as I go so I can see how much I'm actually sanding off. And again, I'm going to use the same method of placing hot glue all around the edge of her head and then gluing her in place. Again, you don't have to use hot glue. You could just use some scotch tape and glue it in place. And it would work just as well. And for this picture, we don't have to glue it back in place. We'll just put the mirror in and then the backing and it's ready to go. And these are how our haunted mirrors turned out. Let's see all the rest of the projects together.
so these are our projects for today's Halloween DIYs. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you already know what costume you're going to wear for Halloween, let me know. I'd love to know what everyone's going to be this year. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you have yet to subscribe, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my DIY. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when I've uploaded a new video. I hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful, blessed day, a spooktacular day, and I will see you in my next video. Take care everyone. Bye.